So there is not one theology, there are theologies. And if one comes from that standpoint, one must therefore be very humble. I'm one who presently very slow to talk about denominations. Catholic Church, Anglican Church, SDA Church. Methodist Church. Today when you tell me I'm an Anglican, I resist it. Although I was baptized in that church. And that to me represents an enlightenment. I feel I'm becoming closer to God when I run away from organized denominations. Because organized denominations bottle God and confine him to a very small space to which he does not belong. And the danger of theology therefore is that in my Anglican church sometimes I hear the priest saying we are going to learn about Anglicanism. And I said is that about God that Anglicanism? We are going to learn about Roman Catholicism. Is that about God? Or Roman Catholicism. We are going to learn about SDA. Is that about God or SDAism? And many of us are caught in that whirlpool. Today, I dare say that one of the greatest problems that bedevils, bedevils Africa is religion. It is one of the things that debilitates Africa. Africa now finds herself in a space where many believe, wrongly in my view, that all our problems will be solved through prayer and fasting. Wrong. The divine instruction as I understand it was go ye and subdue the earth and by the sweat of thy brow thou shalt eat. There is no shortage in Kenya even those of you who came from outside who have seen many crusades in billboards in Nairobi, Kenya. And when you travel across Africa there is no shortage of individuals going by different names. Prophet. Prophetess. And yet those of you who are students of theology will be told that the age of prophethood ended, some say, with John the Baptist, some say with Micah. But they are prophetess and prophets. There is no shortage of apostles running around Africa producing rabbits out of hearts in the name of fake miracles. There is no shortage of them. That is part of the African problem. But we do not want to confront it. Particularly you theologians. You do not want to confront it. There is now a theology in Africa of making people feel good without making them good. That is wrong theology. It is unbiblical and is dangerous to Africa. Because the Bible that I read does not say it. The Bible that I read is specific and unequivocal. When I read the book of First Kings, and I read the story of the prophet Elijah and his confrontation with Ahab and Jezebel. He says, bring forth the 400 prophets of Baal and the 450 prophets who are prophets of Asherah and let them come to Mount Carmel. That we may know if God is God, let him be worshipped. And if Baal is God, let him be worshipped. 
Not two ways. Choose. And a choice is made. That is the Bible that I read. And I don't think it has changed. Even if you have the American or the NIV or the King James. That one has never changed. So there is no equivocation in the Bible. It's about choice. The other Bible that I read is to be found in Joshua 24. And you will be familiar with it. The last meeting between Joshua and the elders of Israel before he passes on at Shechem says, remember, before we crossed, before I called Abraham and Nahor from his father Terah, they worshipped other gods and he narrates what he did to them and how he came into the land of the Amorites. And he tells them, choose you now whether you want to worship the gods that your fathers worshipped before they crossed the Jordan or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. As for me and my house, I shall serve the Lord. No equivocation, clarity, choices being made. 